Hey everybody, today we're gonna talk about dealing with grief. If you haven't watched my last video where I defined grief, mourning and bereavement, you can do it now so that we're on the same page. In today's video we're gonna see how can one cope with grief and adjust after a loss. But before I start, welcome to my channel. I'm Anastasia and I'm a psychologist. If you care about mental health, like me, you can subscribe and explore with me the mystic world of human psychology. So what about dealing with grief? What is the process the individual has to go through in order to adjust after a loss? And now we'll begin with the famous five stages of grief that were formulated in 1969 by psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Kubler-Ross was working with terminally ill patients that were dying and she observed that all of them were going through five specific stages when coming to terms with their own death. And the stages were denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. And I will elaborate them in a while. So Kubler-Ross formulated this model for people that were dying themselves, not for people that were grieving, but the model became so famous that the public took it and adjusted it to grief. So Kubler-Ross went back again and tried to adapt it so that it could also make sense about grief. However, the problem was that this new model was not supported in empirical research. And the model says that supposedly all bereaved people go through these five specific stages of grief. At first, they deny that they lost the person, they just can't believe it. Then, at the stage of anger, they're angry that this happened to them. They might be asking themselves why, or they might even be angry at the diseased for leaving them. At the stage of bargaining, bereaved people try to make a deal with a higher power they believe in, like God, and say, for example, please, if you bring me back my loved one, if you heal them, or if you give them just one more day, then I will be the best person, or then I will help people. And they try to make an agreement, so to say. When they realize that this is not possible, they fall into the stage of depression, where they realize that the death is irreversible. And then slowly but surely, they rich acceptance. Now I know this model is all neat and organized and this is something that the human brain needs, right? And also it has a happy ending because you rich acceptance. However, I'm afraid that life is a bit more complex than that. And indeed, many researchers have now studied the model and it has not been proven that all bereaved people go through these five specific stages in this specific order, neither that they should in order to adjust after a loss. And also, I think it's time to stop spreading this model because it might place an additional burden to people that are grieving. Imagine a wife that lost her husband. Maybe she feels really sad, but she doesn't feel angry at all. If she's familiar with the model, she might feel that something is wrong with her, that something is wrong with her grieving process. Well, that is not true. And I have a poem that shows exactly that by Linda Paston, and I will read just a small uh, piece of it. It says, the night I lost you, someone pointed me towards the five stages of grief. Go that way, they said. It's easy, like learning to climb stairs after the amputation. And so I climbed. Acceptance. I finally reach it. But something is wrong. Grief is a circular staircase. I have lost you. And I think it shows really beautifully exactly that grief is more complex than that and a bereaved person might feel sad and then angry again and then sad again and this is completely normal. So what is the right model for grief? You may be asking yourselves. What is the process the individual has to go through? There is an opinion firstly formulated by Freud and then developed by other scientists like Colin Moray Parks that you have to do the grief work. Grief work is that you have to confront the reality of the loss go over the events surrounding the death, revisit the memories with a diseased person and try to gain some distance with them, detach from them. Two famous models that have been supported on grief work is the phase model by John Bowlby and the task model by Warden. Bowlby supported his model on attachment theory, which is empirically tested, so we have a better starting point for this model. Bowlby said that bereaved people go through four phases in their process of grief, not in a specific order, and these phases were shock, yearning and protest, despair and restitution. 
These faces look a bit like the stages of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, but the difference here is that this model is more flexible and these phases can come and go, wax and wane. On the other hand, Warden supported his model on clinical experience and he said that dealing with grief is all about completing four tasks, again, not in a specific order. And these tasks are the first one, accept the reality of the loss. You have to stop avoiding, stop denying the fact that you lost that person. The second task is that you have to allow the emotions aroused by the loss to be felt. And I remember here a quote by the author John Green that says, pain demands to be felt. And that rings true. Sometimes you have to feel the pain in order to move on. The third task of Warden says that you have to adjust in a world without the diseased. And the fourth task is that you have to relocate the disease emotionally and move on. And I like this task model more because it gives an active role to the bereaved person. You are responsible for the way you're grieving. However, grief work and all the models based on it have been criticized because they overly focus on the loss. And we know for a fact that there are other ways to deal with grief that are not so confrontative in nature. Also, it's good to keep in mind that grief is a very painful and difficult process and sometimes you have to take a break from it, go for a walk and then go back to your grief and keep mourning. So there is a last model I will explain today that answers these doubts and this is the dual process model of coping with bereavement by Henk Schutt and Maggie Strobe. This model is quite innovative because it doesn't stay at the fact that you have to accept the reality of the loss. It adds another element that was quite neglected till then in theory. And this element is that while you're grieving, you also have to look towards the future do something different, adjust to the changes brought by the laws. So in this model, there is a bubble we call life after loss. And in this bubble, there is a smaller bubble called loss-oriented activities. There, you will talk about the diseased person, you will cry, you will visit their grave, you will do the grief work. And then there is the other bubble called restoration-oriented activities, where you're going to start a new hobby, read a book, go for a walk, find new meaning, a new identity for yourself, a new role, and adjust to changes. For example, if you lost your partner and they were the one doing the finances or cooking, maybe you now have to learn how to do that. So in this model, adaptive grieving is this oscillation, this swinging from the one process to the other. We both need confrontation and destruction, avoidance to keep a balance. This is what in this model is considered normal grief. And I don't like this word normal because all grief reactions should be equally accepted. We are human, we're not robots, and if we lose someone we love, we're going to be in a lot of pain. And there is no criteria that can tell us if we do it correctly or not. But we use these words normal grief and disordered grief or complicated grief in order to identify this minority of people that might need some extra help in their grieving process. This video was about normal grief, but if you want to know more about complicated grief, check out this video by Dr. Katie Morton. So that was the video for today. I would like to know in the comments which model resonates more with you because we are all unique and we see things differently. If you learned something from the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring the bell in order to receive notifications each time I upload new content. I'm very happy you care about mental health. See you in the next video. Bye.